uh, the battle scenes um, in Grenada. It's a lot of work. It reminds me as I watched the film, it was a lot of work, but it was very, um, it was very meaningful, you know, to work with Clint in the, these scenes and that we we're trying so hard to authentically reenact a battle that really happened and people really did lose their lives. But the, um, but the United States prevailed. In the movie, it's portrayed as, you know, we're part of this uh, recon unit. In reality, it was Army Rangers. Uh, I don't know how many people know that. The script was written. Warner Brothers and Clint Eastwood were ready to go to production uh, to make this movie. And one of the last steps was uh, executive producer Fritz Mains. He's a real character. And he told me the story. He was a uh, retired Army himself. Clint Eastwood was in the Army. And Fritz Mains went to the Pentagon with the script to get their approval. And what he got surprised him because it was rejected by, uh, by the Army. And uh, doing what... Uh, producers do uh, and being resourceful he took it next door to the Marine Corps and they read the script and knowing that Clint Eastwood was attached uh, very smartly uh, agreed to sign off on this and, and was with full uh, support so that detail was was made so the movie becomes about the Marines uh, overcoming adversity with their gunnery sergeant in, in, in charge of things and the uh, so then that that detail about the battle that was fought in Grenada uh, was again just to be clear what looked to be what were portrayed in the movies as Marines was actually Army it's okay um, the last uh, the very last scene in the film is the guys getting off the the, uh, the plane, and they're, they're you know brought back home, and you know greeted to a hero's welcome, and there's little bits and moments there, including uh, uh, sweet uh, hugging his uh, presumed uh, wife or girlfriend, and it was um, it's really nice, you know, it was a, an, a beautiful hot day on this tarmac at uh, El Toro Airfield. In, in, uh, it's actually in Orange County, California. And, um, but it was sad. That was the, that was, that part of the movie was, was shot sequentially. And that was the very last day that I worked on the film. And I knew that it was, uh, that was it for me. So, uh, um, since then I've, I've had the opportunity to run into Clint Eastwood a handful of times over the years. It's been some time since I last saw him, but, he has always been gracious, and I always, you know, start out by kind of reintroducing myself. But he always knows me and remembers me, and uh, it's just a—he's a special person. Heartbreak Ridge is a special film. Uh, I'm biased, but it's a special film in, in my heart. And uh, but what I've come to learn is uh, the and, and, and how important the military is to our great country and I, it has connected me. Having played the Swede in Heartbreak Ridge has authentically you know, connected me to the Marine Corps, and, and most specifically, but all of our own armed forces, and I am forever grateful. I, to this day, you know, I am recognized and approached, and people follow me on Facebook and Instagram, in social media and identify me, Heartbreak Ridge continues to, to run and be seen and people will reach out to me and, and, and uh, ask, uh, ask me to connect with them in some way. I'm glad to do it and at, my, at the very least I can always, I always try to make sure that I thank those that served in our military, those great and brave men and women. I thank them for their service and I, I will do that and I am doing that right now to all of our, our military. So thank you for um, uh, your your great service and what you do and if Swede uh, uh, impacted your life in any uh, small uh, way I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be a little a 
little part of that. I've had so many countless people approach me over the years and say they joined the Marine Corps because of Sweet. And that, uh, believe, believe it, that really hits me in the heart because uh, there's no guarantee that it's going to be a safe uh, career for you. I mean, you're going to, you, you may end up and likely end up in harm's way. So I, I take that uh, bit of responsibility that goes along with it. Um, all I know is that I was a young actor uh, trying to break into Hollywood in uh, 1986 when I got cast in Heartbreak Ridge. And uh, I was uh, asked to, my agent contacted me and said, uh, they're not letting us know who's in the film, but it's gonna be a movie made over at Warner Brothers and they wanna audition you. And I went over and I read for this character, Swede. And the script read, Swede enters six feet seven, 290 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, and uh, uh, I ended up getting the role. Uh, the rest is history. I never met Clint Eastwood until I, I got down to uh, Camp uh, Pendleton and met him because uh, with the way he, he typically cast things that it would, it would put on my audition. I had two callbacks, so there were three auditions. It was put on videotape and it sent to him and uh, he made the final decision to cast me and I'm forever grateful. So this is Pete Koch. I hope you have enjoyed my movie review of Heartbreak Ridge starring Clint Eastwood and uh, Pete Koch as the Swede and I uh, appreciate uh, again all of you that have served this great country, men and women alike and I uh, thank you for your service and God bless America.